بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه صدق الله العظيم The 27th of Ramadan the day after a very special night the 27th night we don't know if it was the 29th the 27th the 25th the 23rd or the 21st any lucky soul will be those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless with the opportunity of hitting the jackpot. So for those of us who were tuned in last night, late last night, we saw exactly what was going on. There's no phones, there's no calling, that's it. I'm going to keep that inshallah for next year. Now coming back to the commentary of the Holy Quran, the synopsis of the 27th Jews. We have ad dhariyat which begins at the end of 26th and then it continues into the 27th. We have At-Tur, we have Najm, we have Al-Qamar, we have Surah Al-Turrahman, Al-Waqiyah and Al-Hadid. So now there are many recurring themes in every single one of these chapters, but one by one inshallah we will mention some of these themes, these subjects that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala speaks about in these respective chapters of the Holy Quran. ad dhariyat Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala speaks about resurrection. And Allah takes oath. Allah doesn't need to take oath. Oath taking is something that's become common today. People lie. And even when they lie, they take up the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they still lie. And it becomes even more difficult to take and accept the word or the promise of such a person who lies after taking the name of Allah. Taking oath is serious. Allah takes oath. Allah doesn't need to take oath. But when Allah does take oath, that's only to... To, to make us understand how grave the gravity of what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. Allah speaks about the day of resurrection and that is definitely going to come. <inaudible> Whatever you've been promised, oh yeah, it's coming. There's no doubt. Like the Arab proverb says, <inaudible> Everything that is coming, it's close. Allah said too in the Holy Quran, it's close, it's coming. So Allah takes oath, no, alas, this is something real. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in speaking about the day of judgment, some of its horrendous happenings, some of the things that are going to happen just before the final hour or at the time when the trumpet is sounded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes the claims, many claims of the disbelievers, of the idolaters, the mushrikeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about a few of the qualities of the believers, very special people who worship Allah. They used to sleep but a little at night. In other words, they spent their nights in the worship of Allah. And these people were so amazing that after having spent most of the night in the worship of Allah, these people, they ask Allah for forgiveness. After doing what? After spending a night in worship. We sin, we rebel, we transgress, we do evil. We wrong ourselves, and even then, we don't even bother asking Allah. We have this notion, Allah is most forgiving, Allah is most merciful. When did, when did we really seek Allah's pardon? Seek Allah's forgiveness with dismay with sorrow with regret with shame that's what asking Allah for forgiveness is like and amongst their qualities is that they spend from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with and they give to those that are needy to those that are poor to those that are destitute everywhere there are rights Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed these individuals to fulfill the rights of the money that Allah has blessed them with they take care of the needs of others. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his guests. The guests, the angels. They came to him to inform him that they were actually headed to another destination. Where to? Qawmilut. We know Qawmilut quite well by now. So Qawmilut, they, they were destroyed. Their destruction was met meted out to them by these angels that came to visit Ibrahim alayhi salam and give him the glad tidings and the news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to bless him with a son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did and then in the next in the 27th part but the same chapter Al-Dhariyat Allah makes a very brief mention of Fir'aun with Musa alayhi salam of Ad 
of Thamud, of Nuh Very, very briefly, each one of these chapters in the Qur'ans that we read with the 13 lines, they're only a mirror. Each one of these chapters is now four pages on average in the 27th. Waqiya is five and Hadid is seven. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes Adhariyat by reminding us, telling us and informing us that we were created to worship Allah. Don't get lost. Don't lose your focus. You might have to re-navigate every so often. Don't forget why you came into existence. Allah brought us into this world to worship Him. Imagine sending somebody on an errand. You tell them, go to this part of the world to do this. This person goes and he has a blast of a time. He goes to every single beach he can imagine. He eats in the finest dining restaurants. This person drives cars he's never imagined driving in his life. He does other things, this, that, and the other. All he had to do was take care of one specific task. After three weeks of a vacay of his life, comes back into the office Monday morning and the boss inquires, what did you do? Send you off for three weeks. Boss, let me tell you, I went to the best beaches, the finest resorts. I saw the, the, the most beautiful, breathtaking scenery. I went here, I went there, I tasted this, I did that. I met this, I met everything. Wonderful, it seems like you had a wonderful time. Now, what about the task for which you were sent? Oh, that task, I, I forgot. Imagine what, what the boss is gonna think of this person. That's what you did. We, lay, we lived in this world for 60, 70 years. We went to the finest places, we went to the finest resorts, we went on the best vacations, we lived in big, beautiful houses, we drive fine cars, we compete with one another, and that's one of the themes in today. We compete with one another, and who can drive better, and who can eat better, and who can live better, and who can... And then we call back to Allah, what did you do? Oh Allah, I did this, that, and the other. But what about the purpose for which I sent you into this world? What then? Allah reminds us, this is why you were created. Next chapter, at tur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again tells us about the day of judgment and that it's near and it's going to happen and not a single soul will be able to dodge. The day of judgment is coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare us. And remember, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. And let me add, and I'm also trying to spare you worries of that day. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak, speaks about something that is so pacifying and consoling. Parents will be reunited with their children in Jannah and spouses will be reunited with their spouses in Jannah. Even if they didn't make it to where their parents did or the parents didn't make it to where the children did, the wife wasn't as pious as the husband or the husband wasn't as pious as the wife, they'll still be reunited. As long as the one that made it to the higher level is in Jannah. Well, they had Iman. And as long as the others that want to be reunited with them also have Iman. You make it into Jannah, it doesn't matter where you made it. Whoever is the higher of the two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you reach. Wow, this is so nice. If my father makes it all the way up there, my father is a good man. I love him. I hope I'll be reunited with him and all of us all of the siblings and family members. It applies to everybody who's listening and watching and everybody who's been praying and making dua and worshiping all these nights of Ramadan. We'll be reunited, especially last night we got so many calls. Make dua for my marhum father, my marhum mother, my marhum so and so, marhum, somebody has left this world. Insha'Allah, glad tidings. After reading this verse, you know, contemplate over the book of Allah. It's just so amazing. Read what Allah tells us. Verses like this make me smile. I'm about to, wow. Allah will reunite us. Allah knows the amount of love and the amount of the bond, the connection, the affection between a, a child and his or her mother, her father, the spouses sometimes. But hopefully you didn't hear that. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about absolving the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of the false claims. They call you a sorcerer. They call you a magician. They call you a kahin, a mad, what the, mad man, a majnoon. Don't worry. You don't got to worry, O Muhammad. Through the mercy of Allah, neither are you mad, neither are you a liar. Neither are you a poet, neither are, these, neither are, you, are you a sorcerer. These people don't know it. You've got nothing to worry about, O Muhammad. Allah is telling you this. Allah is absolving you. Imagine if some great celebrity were to say, no, he's cool. 
No, he's like this. Or they just, you know, mention a line of yours. Or they say, take your name, so and so. I'm about to take one. I got to be careful. So imagine something of this nature takes place. Allah is absolving this person. Allah is absolving this person. And then Allah affirms Tawheed. Oneness, Allah's oneness, belief in the oneness of Allah. And absolutely nothing is to be ascribed unto Him. You don't. We worship Allah alone. Health comes from Allah. Wealth comes from Allah. Sickness comes from Allah. When we're sick, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us cure. Everything is from Allah. And Allah speaks about this in great, great detail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness and that He is one in everything He does. Children come from Allah, happiness comes from Allah, sorrow, sadness comes from Allah. All, everything is from Allah. Nothing is outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's control. So when you hear and you say Allah does, Allah does everything and anything. Allah does it with means, Allah does it without means, Allah does it against means. Fire can burn when Allah wants it to burn. And if Allah wants, fire becomes cool and peaceful like it did for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah does. Allah orders the fire. Allah does. And this is why we need to go out in the path of Allah. Now that we're in the last few nights, we're going to be making some tashkil probably. Go out in the path of Allah. This is what's being discussed. When we used to go in Jamaat, we used to. Inshallah, we'll be back. This is what we learn. I make the youth in my group, the university, college, high school students sit down. And they know about everything. They know about everything. This industry, the sports industry, the music industry, the movies industry, this is this. I ask them what we're going to do. All I ask of you is to speak to me for one minute, 60 seconds about Allah. Don't digress. Don't go off topic. Stick to the greatness, the majesty, the kibriya, the jalal, the grandeur of Allah. They'll start. But what, 10, 20, 30 seconds in, uh, 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 um, speak about Allah's greatness. It'll enhance It'll enrich and empower your iman like nothing else. So after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Prophet be patient with the mushriks. They don't believe, they're going to scold you, they're going to taunt you, they're going to mock you, they're going to ridicule you, they're going to make fun of you, they're going to... It's okay. Oh Muhammad, just be patient. Do your job. Leave the rest to Allah. Allah will take care of him like Allah did take care of them. Next chapter, an najm in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks. So this is that najm is, is that chapter with the first sajda revealed. There are 14 sujood, according to, there's a difference of opinion in this as well. The Shafi'is have maybe, I think, one or two more. Nevertheless, the sujood that we find in the Holy Quran, they must be made. When a sajda ayah is recited, that sajda should be, whether it's made there and then, which is recommended, which is what we should be doing. But of course we forget, we're, we didn't have the chance, the opportunity, we can make it later on, but we must make it later on. So that sajda, those sujood that we find, the one in Surah An-Najm is actually the first one that was revealed to Rasulullah So when Rasulullah recited this, he was in Mecca at the time, when he recited that verse of sajda, the last verse, um, was it the last verse? Uh, yeah. Yes, the last verse of Surah An-Najm. When Rasul recited that last verse, Surah An-Najm with the sajda in it, he made sajda, everybody else made sajda. One person didn't. What was his name? Umayyat ibn Khalaf. I'm not going to make sajda, come on. He just decided to pick up some sand, some dust from the ground and rub it on his forehead. Don't, don't be a boss when Allah asks you to do something or else you're going to get tossed. That's what happens. He tried to show his pride and arrogance to Allah. Allah is telling you make sajda. No, I'm not going to, you want me to bow down? You want me to go into prostration? No. He just takes him, rub it on his forehead. He died a very, very, of a terrible death. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to him. When Allah orders you to do something, that's the bottom line. You don't question. Allah is doing, is perfect. Allah is ordering commandments, injunctions. Are perfect. May Allah give us the understanding to be able to fathom this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us there's some very amazing verses in the beginning of Surah Al-Najm that everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired the Prophet to say, it's not his speech. It is the speech of Allah. He doesn't speak on his own accord. That's why those companions that used to document and write and record everything that the Prophet said, it is what Allah wanted him to say. He doesn't say anything in vain. He doesn't say anything just pointlessly or baselessly. 
Allah inspires him. وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how close Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa came. So in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ Two bows. Whether this means the distance, two bows, bows, bows and arrows, uh, what's it called, uh, hunting? No, no. Or it means the distance between the string and the bow. So this is how close. It's only to give us an understanding, perhaps, or this might be the... Whether this was how close Rasul Sallallahu came to Allah, or according to others, he never saw Allah, but this is how close he came to Jibreel Alayhi salam. When Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, and this is so amazing, I hope you can understand and appreciate this academically, linguistically. So when she was asked, did the Prophet ﷺ ever see Allah? She replied, now these are certain words that I'm going to use. She said, Nurun anna ra'ahu. Allah is nur. How is it possible for him to see Allah? But if you take these same words and you don't shuffle the letters around, but you just, just the spacing is to be shuffled around. The words, the letters are exactly the same, in the same order, but just shuffle them around. Nurun anna ra'ahu would become nuraniyun ra'ahu. Allah is made of nur, or Allah is nur, Allah is, excuse me, Allah is nur and he saw him. Wow. So now, of course, this is going to bring about a huge academic debate, a discussion. Did he see him? Did he not? Anna ra'ahu, how would he see him? Ra'ahu, he saw him. So we don't know. There's differences, of course, in almost everything. And there's each one of the sides now. Each one of these, Abn Abbas on one side, and then you have Aisha Siddiq on another side. I mean, this is tough. So they both have their proofs, they have their evidences, they, have, they make their statements, both of them. Whether he did see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he didn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he didn't, so this basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it. Now those who say that he didn't and he came so close, this is referring to Jibreel alayhi salam and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah speaks about the three big idols. أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتِ وَالْعُزَّةِ وَمَنَاتِ So Lat, Allat, Allat, these fools, they wanted to give Allah the name Allah because Allah, they considered it was a male, and if you turn to Dr. Zakir Naik, he'll tell you that Allah has no female. Allah has no male or female. But Allah was the male. So they named this idol that they held in such great reverence. They named it Allah, which should have been the female for Allah. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. Or they say Allah was actually the name of a man who used to make this barley mash. And he used to serve this mash with water to the people that would come to perform the pilgrim after he left this world and died. Many of these idols, by the way, that were made in the name of certain people were actually good people. Many of them, even from the time of Nuh salam. But nevertheless, so they made an idol. They used to worship this person by his grave and eventually they construct this idol and they start to worship it, Allah. And then there was Al-Uzza. So Al-Uzza was supposed to be the female for Al-Aziz, the mighty Allah, one of the names, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Mu'im, Al-Aziz. I hope we're learning the names. Please don't stop until now. I do know that some of us were very serious. How? When I stopped messaging, the mass messaging, the broadcast messaging, some of the brothers, I told them, inshallah, I apologize, it's too much, you know, I'm going to be, tr I'm trying to like focus a little more on reading the Quran, I won't be able to message you anymore. About 10 or so said, no, you still have to. I said, no problem, what you can do is join the WhatsApp groups for the masjid, and there you can get the daily name. That's what they needed. They needed, they knew, the talk is every day at 7.30, it used to be at 7, now 7.30, then at night at 10, 11.45, sorry. They knew this. But they were anxious to learn the new name every day. Alhamdulillah, I was so pleased to know that out of a list of 250, at least 10 were memorizing the names. Even one person, get a free key to Jannah, threw me to Jannah. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. Whoever is listening at this time or watching. Then Aziz, Allah's name, they wanted to make that female. So, Uzza, al Uzza. This is that same idol that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent who to destroy? Allah sent, oh this was in the Sahaba series, sorry, I was thinking it was part of this one. 
Khalid ibn al-Walid. And then he went and he thought he had destroyed the idol. He came back. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, you need to go back. This is authentic. It's reliable. And then he goes back and he sees this woman with disheveled hair and screaming, pulling her hair, doing some funny things. After he killed uh, the woman and the uh, <laughs> idol, then he came back to the Prophet ﷺ and said, yeah. The Prophet ﷺ said, yeah, now you've destroyed Al-Uzza. Nevertheless, so uh, Manat, Manat was actually the name of the idol that they used to go next to. And when they would, were they were about to announce the Hajj, the pilgrimage, that is where they would stand to make the announcement. Just like if you go to Masjid Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, Madinah to Munawra, oh Allah, please take us back. Those of us who had intended to go this year, oh Allah, please, our, our hearts are dying. Our hearts are crying. Ya Allah, take us, take us. I miss it. Wallahi, I miss it. I miss the black stone, the Ka'batullah Sharif. I miss the Multazam. That was the spot which people have very greatly underestimated because of the rush that we find for the black stone. They don't focus on the Multazam. I'll tell you where it is. I'll be a nice guy. Here's the black stone. And then here is what? Uh, the door of the Kaaba. It's not too much. It's, of course, it's wider than this, but it's just a little bit, maybe from there to here, from the beginning of this mihrab to here, or maybe just this much. So that is the multazam. You stick your chest and you stick your cheek against this wall, that part of the wall of the Kaaba, and you make dua. Sufyan Thodi says, I tried and tested, and it's proven it worked. And those who narrated to me, they all tried it and tested, they proved that it worked. And those who narrated to the, uh, the one who narrated it to me, and every single one of us who heard this from the Prophet, that any dua that is made there it is accepted. So nevertheless, oh Allah, take us there, yes. So if you go to Masjid al Nabu, you'll see pillars. Ustwana Abu Lubaba, Ustwana so-and-so, Wufud, Ustwana, I can't remember their names, spend some time. Oh Allah, take us back. There's pillars there. Each one of these pillars is very significant. If your guides take you, you should ask your guides to tell you what is the significance of each one of these pillars. You're not an ordinary place. Madinatul Munawwara, the city of the Prophet, is like home to us. And there you have the masjid of the Prophet. And just next door you have the, the pride of the universe resting therein. Wow, super fantastic. So ask the guy to tell you, what is this? What is Ustuwana so and so? What happened here? What did the Prophet He would dispatch the jama'ats, the groups to go out in the path of Allah from there. Imagine, you know, when we go on the path of Allah, Amir Saab comes and Amir Saab is giving us a little bit of hidayat. Hidayat is when we go out, they give you guidelines on how to spend your time in the right manner. Rasul Sassim used to do this in Masjid in Abu'i, okay? Where did you get this from? The Prophet used to do this. I'm telling you exactly where he did it too. Yeah, you see it happening in Delhi, you see it happening in Raiwan, in Pakistan, or in Kakrail, in Bangladesh. It happened in Masjid in Abu'i. And if you want to see it happen still today, let me tell you where to find it in Madinah al Munawwara. After Salatul Isha, exit Babu Salam, you will find the Ansar of Medina. People from the progeny of the helpers of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam waiting there to meet you, to greet you, to take you to their homes and feed you, and then to give you the same message that was given by Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is given in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and by 250 million people in the world today. Go. Babu Salam, we're going to be there inshallah, we'll be there together. I've experienced this myself, I'm not telling you what I heard from others. I saw with my eyes, I went. It's an amazing feeling, listening to it from the Arab, and from the Arab who is from Medina to Munawwara, and from the Arab from Medina who is from the Ansar, it doesn't get better than this. I'm talking about Tabligh Jamaat. <laughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Manat, Manat was that idol, they used to announce the Hajj from Manat. And then, on the Day of Judgment, Nobody's carrying your burden for you, nor will you be made to carry anybody's burden. Nobody will carry mine, nor will I be made to carry anybody else's. Every man for themselves. That's it. Every woman for themselves. That's it. It's, it's a figure of speech, but people might say, Whoa, why did he say every man for themselves? Why not every woman for themselves? It's a figure of speech. You've got to be so cautious. That's true. Yes, absolutely. But nevertheless, every man and woman for themselves on the day of judgment. Nobody will come to rescue anybody else. You did something wrong, you will be punished. I did something wrong, I will be punished. May Allah, you know, that's not, it's not easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I will be punished. It's just another thing on my tongue. I will be. May Allah save us from punishment. Because punishment on the day of judgment is real. Punishment in this world is no big deal. But punishment on that day is real. And anybody who's given, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Oh no. 
Then, next chapter, Al-Qamar, Qamar the moon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks here about the last day in great detail again. And briefly, oh, it, but, but one passage for the story of Nuh alayhi salam, one for Ad, to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Hud, and then you have Lut alayhi salam, one paragraph or so, and then uh, Fir'aun and Musa alayhi salam. And then, um, what will be the uh, end, the outcome of the good people, and then the bad people? Moving forward, Surah Rahman, the next chapter of the Holy Quran, which even, I know we all love Surah Rahman. And as much as we love it, it's so difficult to memorize. It's not so difficult to memorize, it's difficult to retain. To memorize it, half the surah, I don't know how many times. Which is it of the favors of your Lord that ye deny? This is half, more than, almost half the surah is this. But to know, okay, Khalaq al-Insan comes first, Rabbul Mashriqain comes second, Maraj al-Bahrain comes next, Yakhruj Minuman comes next, Walahu Jawaru comes fifth, Kulluman alayha comes sixth, Yasaluhu comes seventh, Sanafrulakum comes eighth. Ooh, it's looking good. No, no, I'll stop here. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks again and again, what is it? Which one of the favors of your Lord? And Allah mentions favors therein. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the signs. His signs meaning the sun, the moon, the sky, the earth, and the creation of man in the waters, in the easts, in the west. Somebody asked me this after one of the talks one night, completely irrelevant to the talk. We were talking about Musa alayhi salam. He came to me with a question regarding Rabbul Mashriqayni wa Rabbul Maghribayn. But we find those great listeners as well. May Allah bless them. Why, what's two Easts and two Wests? I'm just going to give you a Kathir's answer and that's it because this isn't the time to have Tafsir of the Holy Quran. Yes, inshallah, after Ramadan, Sheikh Mufti uh, Abdullah Mangera will continue to conduct his Tafsir of the Holy Quran. At least we'll continue with the last, the, the smaller chapters. I believe he might almost be done now, the last complete part, 30th part. We will continue from there. But nevertheless, Rabbul Mashriqain wa Rabbul Maghribain, the Lord of the two Easts and the two Wests. So the sunrise of the East and the West and the sunset of the East and the West. I hope this answers your question if you had one. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about His being the ever living. Allah will not die, everything else will. Everything will come to an end, everything will, be, will perish, everything will be obliterated, eradicated, deleted, everything. But Allah. Oh, when Allah speaks about Himself in the Holy Quran, it's just so amazing. And I love this. I'm pretty sure some of the things that you've picked up by now, for those of you like Brother Shakir and others who have been listening, I think, every single day, Brother Isbah from Oklahoma, I'm sure you've picked up certain things that I say, certain gestures, certain. So nevertheless, we will, everything will come to an end except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be brought back to life and then we will be judged. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Then Allah speaks about the blessings of the people of Jannah. So if you fear standing in front of Allah the day of judgment, you'll be given two gardens. They will be those that have afnan. I believe it's a certain type of tree with certain branches. I got to be careful now. These are some of the words that, you know, I can't, they're a little more difficult. Nevertheless, Allah speaks about the delights, the blessings, the bounties and boons in Jannah. Fruits and this and that. And of course, lest we forget, Allah speaks about it here. And of course, I'm going to talk about it. And then Allah speaks about it in Surah Al-Waqi'ah again, back to back. Wow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this prepared for the good guys in the life hereafter. After this, al-waqiyah, Allah speaks about three categories of people. The people of the right, they'll be given their book of deeds in the right hand. The people of the left, Allah save us, they'll be given their book of deeds in the left hand. And then there's the exclusive, the VVIP. Hopefully, you and me on the day of judgment. Who are they? As-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon, ulaika al-muqarraboon. There are as-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon, like, I don't, I, I wish I knew more English and I wish I had more knowledge to be able to explain some of these things. But, as-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon, like, how do you translate this? The close ones, the very near ones, the close ones, the very near ones. I don't know, I don't know. I'm sorry. Thanks for listening anyways. 
So Allah speaks about them, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Jannah, the people of Jannah, the rewards that we went through, the, the verses that Allah spoke about in al you can tune in or you can check out the video, uh, one of the videos, I don't remember which one, I'm sorry, but on a glimpse of Jannah, the post tarawi the late night talks, which will, yes, continue tonight, inshallah, after Taraweeh. It's going to be a nice short Taraweeh tonight. But never, oh no, this wasn't short. Nevertheless, so this, we will continue with that tonight as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the reward of the people that are good, people of Jannah, and the reward of the people that are bad. And what is it going to be like for the people at the time? What is it going to be like for people at the time of death? Allah speaks about the last moments of the people that are dying. But for the good guys, ooh, when they, they're about to die, it's not easy. Dying is very difficult. And you can't ask anybody what is it exactly like because anybody who experienced it never came back. However, Allah tells us what it's like in the Holy Quran. That individual who's good, Allah will show them. The angels will come to them to give them a glimpse of what their Jannah is like in the hereafter. So for this person, he's anxious to leave this world. No matter what he had, if he lived a life pleasing to Allah, he wants to leave. She wants to leave. And it's on the flip side, on the other side, on contrary to this, the bad guy, they'll be shown what's waiting for them and the life hereafter. May Allah save us. This is scary stuff. Really scary. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about certain, you know, Allah blesses us with water. Who gives you this water? Allah gives us this fire, this fire that we use for so many things, beneficial. And then Allah speaks about the creation of man. These different things Allah speaks about in Surah Al-Waqiyah. And then the last chapter in the 27th is Al-Hadid, the iron. So Al-Hadid, there's one verse in Al-Hadid which is greater than a thousand other verses. Sounds like Laylatul Qadr. Hope we have another chance at that, inshaAllah. What is it? Allah is the first, Allah is the last, Allah is the most apparent, and Allah is the most hidden, and He has knowledge over everything. Rasul is reported to have said the hadith of Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, Ibn Kathir has mentioned it. This verse alone is greater than a thousand verses. Why not? I mean, wow, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Him, 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 and Him. Every, every letter, every word here is, is exclusively the praise of Allah. Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that everything glorifies Him. Whether you understand it or don't, whether you can see the sun, you can't see the sun, you can listen to the sun, you can't see, listen to it. Whether you can see the moon, the stars, the trees, the, the breeze of the wind, the, the, the grass, the everything. They all praise Allah. They glorify Allah. We don't understand, but they do. We, unfortunately, sometimes don't. Most of the time. And then Allah speaks about His knowledge, His power, His kingdom. And Allah tells us, those who became Muslim before the conquest of Mecca, those who did good deeds, those who made the sacrifice before the conquest of Mecca, they're, all, they're on a whole different level. Yeah. Sure, you accept Islam, you make sacrifice, you participate. After the conquest of Mecca, you definitely, sure, you saw the Prophet ﷺ, you're in that class. But if you were amongst those people who did all of this before you saw the conquests, the victories, the days of glory, you're on a different level. It's easy to join once the whole world knows about it, once everybody else is doing it. But to, to go against the tide of the way, that's what's difficult. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hypocrites on the day of judgment. We mentioned this, I believe, in the eighth part as well when we were speaking about Al-A'raf. It was mentioned there too for some reason. Nevertheless, these hypocrites on the day of judgment, they're going to run after the believers because the believers are going to have light. Remember, the day of judgment is pitch black darkness. And they're going to have light. The believers, oh yeah, they're going to be illuminated. So they're going to use their light of Iman to make it across the bridge of Sirat and to navigate on the day of judgment. These hypocrites are going to run after them. You know, we used to chill with them. We used to be with them. We used to follow them. We used to everything with them. In this world, distinction is to be made then. Remember the episode on the day of judgment 
Separate yourselves, bad guys, you criminals. Dare try to roll with the good guys today. That was in that world where anything goes. On the day of judgment, these munafiks aren't going to get what they were hoping for. So they're going to run after the good guys. The good guys are going to tell them, Allah is going to, uh, uh, you need to go back and get your own light. Go back, get your own. So they'll go back to get their own light. They'll realize that there's only hell. They don't have anything. They're going to see punishment. So they're going to turn back and try to run back to the believers to get light. Allah is going to put a wall. It's going to be, there's going to be a barrier between them and the good guys. They're stuck. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Serious. Then Allah, there's this amazing verse. Many scholars have gone into great details regarding this verse. It's just this amazing parable of what it's like, our life in this world. So it starts off with basically for children, for little toddlers. Initially, it's just playing that has no purpose. Like my son and his dinosaurs, or my daughter and her Pokemon? Ya Allah. Nevertheless, how they enjoy it, it's got no purpose to it. They're just passing time, they're having, that's it. And then from that, you go to a next stage. You've got toys, or you've got gadgets, you've got different things now. And you move on from that, and you start spending this time. So it's, it's amusement. But it, it has a purpose. You could be going to the gym. You could be playing soccer. You could be doing something which also benefits you. It's got a purpose, but it's still amusement. Inshallah, we've heard that hopefully in Toronto, they're going to be open, um, opening up the park soon. We hope to be back there soon, inshallah. And then after this, it comes to the stage of Zina, which is adornment, beauty. So you're wearing clothes, but you want to show off what you've got. You've got the in Instagram. Wow. You've got... Snapchat and TikTok, you just want to show off. You, they might be living lives of, lives of misery, but the one day they put on a nice shirt, a nice watch, a nice smile, a nice food, you're going to go share it with the whole world? It's up to you. I ain't got an Instagram account. So, Allah says, it's Zina. Allah tells us. And if you're like 40 years old, with all due respect, you're older than I am, and you're still at that stage, like you just want to adorn and beautify for no, 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 it's not worth it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us after this comes the competition and rivalry stage. All right, he got this, so I'm going to get this too. And all of us that were on Adidas the other night, hoping we could get ourselves something, I'm so sorry for you. And with a sad heart, it was a glitch in the system. But yeah, adidas.com here in Canada. And then after that, nevertheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about everything in this world is measured. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, this is Allah's decree. Nothing less, nothing more is going to come to him. I believe this was the commentary of what I just said, inshallah. And if not, then it is definitely a, a theme in the Holy Quran. And then Allah encourages patience and gratitude. Be patient, be persevering. People are going to say things. People are going to treat you not nice. People are going to, they're not, they're going to, they're going to be not nice. People are going to say things that are not nice. They're going to do things that are not nice. It's okay. I, you know what? It's so easy for me to say this. But myself, when people say things or do things, and even a few, a few of the friends, they call, sometimes they ask me, how do, you know, people, they do this to us. What are we supposed to do? Do they do this with you too? Yes, my friend, they've been doing this. They did it with the prophet. They didn't make any profit. You think they're not going to do it with me and you? So it's okay. Just be a little patient. I'm just preaching now. Tonight, if somebody says something that's not nice to me, ask me what my reaction is then, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And miracles were given to the prophets and benefits of iron. So this chapter was called Iron. What about the iron? How many benefits? So there's swords, spears, shields, and lances. And then for plowing, for but what do you call it? Sewing for, you know, the different shovels and axes and hoes and chisels. And then for cooking and all of the other tools. They're made from steel. Allah speaks about steel. There's a very great deal to speak about steel in this chapter. But this is not the place. When we, one day, if Allah gives us the ability to start also the tafsir of the Holy Quran, we'll go into the details there, but this is just to give us an idea. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct understanding and love for the Holy Quran. May Allah accept my worship, your worship, the worship of every believer throughout the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, reward us, and all of those du'as that we made last night, may Allah accept them too. Stay tuned. In just a few minutes, inshallah, we will continue, of course with the salawat and salam on the Prophet and then the dua in Urdu uh, by our senior Imam insha'Allah and then tonight perhaps we can have another uh, post-Tarawi talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.